hello everyone uh thank you for joining in it's great weather here in the northern part of the india so i hope i am hoping wherever you are logging in from the weather is treating you well so we are back with yet another session of pioni patshala uh to this initiative of pioni patshala we try to help you our customers understand the very basic yet critical nuances of selling online better discuss on the most pinching of the issues which you people are currently facing and also in turn helping you grow your business and today on these particular lines we have something very interesting to discuss something which most of our customers have been looking forward to on what exactly to do and that is how do we know what is selling well on amazon and on other e-commerce mar- marketplaces and what is not how do we know which are the categories which are witnessing huge growth while some are not growing that well or essentially how do we know which are the categories that we should be focusing upon and for same we today have ms priyanka bora from seller app with us she is currently leading the market and business partnership at seller app and has a rich experience of over 10 years in marketing finance advertisement and also helping build brands and managing business growth so over to you priyanka now to help understand these things better for our customers thank you prateek thank you i think this has been such a hot topic and you know every customer whichever level they are whether of course more so at the beginner level or even at the advanced level if they're looking to learn even expand their business i think this topic makes so much sense and it totally resonates and connects with a lot of the audience out there who are there to you know sell their products on the e-commerce uh, marketplaces so uh, today i will be decoding this a little bit and let's just get straight into it uh, before that i'll just introduce myself a little bit and talk about my background so um, i have been working for over a little over 10 years and primarily my experience has been in finance i've been into wealth management investment banking and uh, i've worked across different cross functional diverse teams across geography singapore dubai and recently before moving back to india in the us i've worked with firms like prudential morgan stanley and then td ameritrade um before making my foray into this digital marketing space and then right now i'm very very excited to be in this era where you know uh, this is only growing and we see a lot of trends and everything coming and there's a lot of future for this uh, e-commerce growth so uh, right place at the right time i would say and i'm very happy to have made this transition about 2 years ago uh, so yeah here i am i'm you know heading the marketing operations here i'm director of marketing and business partnerships at seller app and i will be talking about what's selling what's not selling you know how to look what data metrics to cover what are some of the trends that you can look out for and so on and so forth so again what to sell and bringing down the million dollar question right definitely mm. okay so really let's now you know this is really the meat of the session where what to sell on amazon and when it really comes to selling on amazon the single most important part of your strategy would be your product selection as i said even before you look into the sourcing bit it is about which category to get into what is it that i want to start selling on you never want to under- underestimate the role what it has on your business success and also you would you don't want to choose the wrong product and you know let your sales and profits of course suffer so it will that this is one very very important aspect that you need to figure out before you get into all the operations bit or the cost bit and all of that so before we take a look at some of those important product trends that has been over the past year or two let me also tell you a little bit about the metrics that we typically hear at seller app also you know use to identify the right product or you know the right product idea if you may so uh, starting Priyanka, with, uh, i think i am able to see slide 7 uh oops i yeah just i i thought i'm sorry uh, i just moved my hand no worries no Ah, yeah know. yeah perfect okay so demand as you know uh, a very sustainable you know business is only possible from a product which is of course has very high you know demand low competition has a very viable market demand and surprisingly this is also a validation check that most sellers typically really fail to you know do so the sell metric algorithm that we have really verifies the demand of any amazon product by three major factors if the product is trending upwards of course you know there are some macro trends that also we look at if there are any major 
trend shifts that has happened over a period of time and of course the seasonality of the product so you know how do you really typically interpret this metric is extremely important essentially you can never really understand you know what products are really popular among your target audience so you'll really get an overview of the consumer interest in the specific product then coming to revenue potential i'm sorry I'll keep moving this revenue potential um revenue potential estimates the expected revenue that has you know generated in a month by the product against the category you're selling so if you're really selling in the high priced products that have very few orders compared to the other categories we really you know got you covered on that as well you know there is an opportunity score that really accurately calculates your monthly uh, revenue potential okay third one i would talk about is competition i would say competitive analysis is i i doesn't you know get better than that i mean everybody knows how the competitive landscape you need to have enough knowledge about it you need to be really abreast about it where it's a really uh, crucial part of your product research process in the opposition score of course this particular metric really helps you understand how many sellers are in this game are really selling the similar product that you're actually searching for looking to sell you will typically get a really better idea of what type of products and brands are ranking up in your category and really how big they are so we also analyze other competitors metrics such as market share or you know voice of share each seller and also the brand's popularity that really had the more sales or reviews that's what we you know the factor that also we look in which kind of plays an important role uh profit margin again indicates the really the possible profit that you can make that can be generated typically by selling that product after deducting all those overhead costs and of course all those e-commerce marketplace related costs as well associated with the product so we really suggest you to look for a product which has good profit margins um the reason of course i mean everybody's here to you know make profits and have that fine difference and arbitrage rather so to speak so finding products with decent margins is really a sustainable way of doing business and in the end uh, i mean that's all that matters i would say you know you are typically selling a product to make your margins and make your profit so uh, another tip i would say here at this point would be to find a product which has a low sourcing price because that of course increases your profit in turn and also a good product with a low sourcing price goes really a long way in determining high profit margins for that particular product so i would say you know keep that in mind overhead costs um i think as an amazon seller you really need to understand that the costs associated with selling on amazon to estimate your actual profits that you will get overhead costs really includes um the price of sourcing the product uh whether it's a fulfillment you know product it's by amazon or merchant fba fbm all of those kind of things of course amazon fees shipping logistics warehousing storage uh all the expenses that are you know really associated with selling your product particularly on amazon is what i'm talking about so i keep mentioning amazon sorry about that but it applies to all the other marketplaces as well and uh, you know these costs also really depend on you know which country you're selling in also high over head cost will deeply affect your profit margins so you want to be wary of that and it's also one of the most i would say overlooked uh, factors during product research you know people are thinking okay this has low demand high competition you know all of those things but they typically forget to talk about or look into the profit side of things or the cost uh, side of things so i would really recommend doing that and not ignoring this bit sellers you know tend to kind of ignore the additional cost or the hidden cost so to speak associated with amazon selling only to kind of face it later and then it might be seeing like a hole being burnt in their pocket so uh, again it's you know you want to do this right at the time of sourcing your product yeah. all right now what makes a great <clears throat> product now okay before you also do your amazon product research i think there's a quick checklist that we have created you know of what is required to come up with the right product and with these product your you know like these checklists your your job typically gets a little bit easier simpler or this again based on some of the metrics or the data points that we've collected and also some of the patterns that we've seen also uh, some of the snippets that we've taken from this is from you know a report 
account that we've created for US Prime Day India as well as US Prime Day US, what happened recently. Some of those trends, looking at that, we've kind of created this list that, you know, this is something that we've noticed in terms of our sellers who are selling on Amazon. So number one, I think it would be choosing products which fall between the range of 10 to $100. I think that is what we have seen at least for the past year or two uh, since I've been here, this is what I've noticed. And I'm kind of, you know, uh, you know, coagulating everything and putting it together. Um, and this is, of course, for the, from the most recent one that happened this year. Choose products that make at least minimum of 10 sales a day. Again, I think similar products should feature in the bestseller rank for at least 5,000 in the main category. That is another very important aspect. The top three related keywords should have about 50,000 plus monthly searches on Amazon. You also want to choose a non-seasonal product because as it's very self explanatory if seasonal products will only do well in seasons and not throughout the year. So you want to choose something which kind of, you know, is, is high in demand throughout the year, not just like something like Halloween uh, decorations, which is primarily there only for holiday season and so on and so forth. Um, I think also select products that can be, you know, of course, sold all year round. Make sure that you want to, you, you are able to source your product quickly and of course, easily because there will be, if there's a constant demand, then there will be no supply on shortage, so to speak. Um, also choose small and light weighted products, ideally two to three pounds. Of course, your shipping costs also get saved in that. Bit. So obviously that becomes another thing where we talked about profit margins. Um, you also know brand names or trademarks should be associated with the product. It should not be very fragile. Choose a product or niche where you can really expand your brand with related products as you scale your business. So those are some of the things that we have kind of looked into and I've put it down together. Now, choosing the right price. Again, finding the ideal price range is crucial before you really you know, decide what to sell. And again, this analysis is based off Prime Day 2222, which happened uh, two months ago. 25% uh, of all the customers spent between $50 to $100 on their orders. And the average order spend was about 54.5. And if, through the graph, you can actually see the percentages of what the different ranges has been of, you know, how, and again, price, I think it's, it's a very like, an important factor that leads to a successful Amazon business. So no matter how skillful you are, or, you know, how you are at like solving your market challenges, if you're really not able to price your product and, you know, put it in that category, people will not really be inclined to buy your product. So I would say, you know, the value for money is extremely important and really a stimulant for um, customer purchases. So again, you know, these are some of the metrics that we've, kind of shared with you here. Okay, so <clears throat> moving on to, you know, what are the most popular categories on Amazon? Again, we have divided by percentages. Um, these are some of the trends that we've seen, again, just in Prime Day. But one thing that I've also seen is this electronics particularly has pretty much been like ruling the roost across the year, whether it's been a holiday season, whether it's been like uh, Thanksgiving, Christmas, whatever it is, electronics is one category that I've seen that always kind of, you know, is on the top list or the top performer uh, amongst all the categories. So uh, again, electronics, household essentials, home and garden, apparel, health and beauty. And these are some of these uh, top selling categories that we've seen consistently perform well on Amazon. Uh, Priyanka. In this one, we are talking about majorly about 2022. So has there been any category which has sort of grown a lot on the uh, in the past couple of years? Or has this trend been rel uh, relatively cons uh, consistent that electronics has been the top category and household follows it? Uh, so, or how, how exactly is it? So I feel like, you know, the percentages may vary that you can see maybe some goes high and low, but primarily, I think, and especially like these um, household supplies, home and garden, then health and beauty, of course, grocery. Particularly, I'm talking about the last two years that I've seen that since the lockdown, since the pandemic, these industries and these categories particularly have really shown a remarkable growth. And consistently for two years, I'm seeing that they have been the top performers. So last year, we did a Prime Day report and we saw similar trends. And this year as well, we're seeing, as I said, electronics consistently for many years, I think I'm seeing electronics uh, be on these top charts. But... Other than that, okay. I think households, 
uh, stationery, notebook, uh, you know, essentials, all of these things have kind of come up now in the last two years since the pandemic. So again, during okay. the holiday seasons, because of seasonality, the percentages may vary, but primarily broadly, the categories will still remain the same. Understood. Understood. Got it. Cool. All right. So again, now trending Amazon categories for Amazon US that you can you should definitely look out for. And as I mentioned, these are some of these major categories that I've seen, you know, growth. And you can see like 74 percent in garden outdoors, 80 percent, 71 percent in office supplies uh, during the pandemic. A lot of the offices actually, uh, you know, had a lot of the offices actually even given like certain budgets to every employee saying that you can set up your, you know, a uh, home office at your home. So they gave them uh, budgets to kind of buy those standing laptops or, you know, computers and desks and so on and so forth. All of those things, notebooks, stationery, supplies, those things kind of, you know, we saw an increase in that. And I think Seller App now works with over 21,000 sellers and, you know, you know, brands with various aspects of their business. So, of course, you know, one thing to help them find the product has been one of our biggest goals. But from our in-depth research, I think, you know, uh, again, from the analysis that we've done in our metrics, we've seen that these these categories typically have done really, really well in the last year or two. And uh, the online home garden and especially the DIY market are becoming really the most, you know, um, popular sectors in the U.S. e-commerce with the highest turnover. I think, you know, COVID-19, of course, contributed to this, you know, favorable trend much, uh, you know, uh, during the lockdown and so on. But outdoor furniture right. and some of the examples here would be like outdoor furniture, garden equipment, all those DIY like the things that you can find are really popular categories. Also, I've seen um, fly repellent fan. That is one of the popular uh, products that has really sold well. Currently, it has an opportunity score of about 75.81, which is pretty good. Another, again, seasonal product, though, which I mentioned before is holiday, uh, you know, Halloween decorations, which is typically for the month of October. But that's also considered as a, you know, like a top performing uh, product here, particularly in the garden, because, you know, if you've seen the US, they have big backyards and they kind of decorate their whole garden with a lot of, uh, you know, Halloween stuff and all that. So that pretty much kind of shoots up uh, during this time. That is another thing. Garden homes is another one which does really well in this category as well. Okay. Um, in the home and furnishing thing, as I said, you know, I think um, home furnishing, uh, you know, products, really the sales are on the rise, especially in the e-commerce space. And again, the home decor market is really witnessing a healthy, uh, you know, growth trend upwards. And also, it's also catalyzed by the rising levels of disposable incomes. Again, you know, recovery of a lot of this real estate industry, increasing urbanization rates, and of course, increasing uh, awareness levels. I mean, uh, uh, home furnishing, again, a lot of offices are still uh, kind of following a hybrid model or they're still following a remote model or maybe two, three days work from home and uh, work from office, sorry, and things like that. So again, this is something that we've seen uh, rise and, uh, you know, a rising levels of urbanization have definitely resulted in the growth of this sector as well. So, so it's not so. just these categories, Priyanka, which would be seeing the growth, but in these categories also, we would be aware that which are the top two or three products essentially which are doing good. Like you talk, talked about garden horses, you talked about specific office supplies and home decor items in the home furniture category. So it's not just category, but also breaking down the category yes. level to specific products. Okay, mm -hmm. great. Right. great. And also I think, uh, you know, in this home and furnishing, I would say candles, uh, candles have done okay. really well. It's also a very niche segment. Then carpets, rugs, mats, these kind of things, you know, they've done uh, really well as well. And great. then again, office supplies, you know, it's, it's I think uh, Amazon's office supplies is really grabbing a lot of attention. Also grabbing more wallet share, I would say, among customers, right. especially business customers now. So, you know, businesses essentially use computers, printers, and other administrative purposes, you know, like notepads and notebooks and pens and staples, etc. All of those uh, kind of things to carry out written communication, bookkeeping, um, data storage activities, so on, all of those things. So, of course, with the evolving global corporate sector is mainly supporting this demand for such products. But, you know, we've definitely seen a, a rise in this category as well, again, in stationary notebooks and so on. Right. Okay. Also, um, this is, I'm sorry, training products on Amazon in the UK right now. And some of these 
have also, you know, I've, I've mentioned these things, but they kind of also come from the trend that we have seen, which I just spoke about, and the reasons behind that. So in UK too, we have seen similar uh, trends, right? Coming, we've, we've actually really um, recently onboarded a client who, I, I would not obviously name him, but uh, we've obviously onboarded a client who wanted to expand their business to the Amazon UK marketplace. And while doing their product research, which we also came up with certain uh, category trends and you know demands for them so our experts have kind of identified these uh, categories as well so handbags I think um, the revenue for handbags in the U.S. marketplace alone is you know it amounts to about uh, U.S. dollars 2.2 billion I think in 2022 and this market is really expected to grow annually by 6% uh, CAGR so from really like it, it has risen from 20. 2002 to 2006, I would believe. I'm sorry, 2020 to 26. So it's expected to grow like by 6%. So I think personalization nowadays and a lot of uh, customization is happening. A lot of innovation is happening within this industry. And so I think these are some of the key triggers or key drivers for the UK handbags also contributing to, you know, the market growth and also these customized products have gained a lot of momentum, particularly in the European countries, I would say, such as uh, United Kingdom uh, in the last five years. So definitely something to look out for if you guys are still planning to expand and in this marketplace and of course thinking about which uh, category to get into. Um, candle, as I mentioned before, you know, it is a home enrichment is a term that has taken like a new meaning or taken the, the you know, this whole thing by a storm, I would say, you know, throughout the past years. And, you know, as we were forced to stay at home, candles have been proven to be like the perfect uh, aesthetic or the element that you would have, not just in terms of fragrance, but also some sort of, like I said, you know, it gives an essence to the house, which makes it look beautiful and, you know, capture wide things like memories, pleasure, comfort, whatever you may use it for, right? So I think there's been an increasing demand for candles, uh, for the decoration of houses, offices, for celebrating festivities. Like, of course, in India, it's Diwali. Crisp is another major factor, so driving this. So it's also a very niche segment. So we don't have enough data for this, like how much it has risen or how much it has grown. Uh, it has happened, but we know through the, again, like researches and just data analytics that it is a very niche segment that has uh, considerably and remarkably risen. So that's why I put it here. Um, again, notebooks also have grown by like 2.4% despite increasing use of gadgets. And it's very surprising that, you know, we are on the screen all the time. We are doing all these virtual meetings and yet people use, and trust me, I'm sitting right here. I have a notebook right next by my side. I mean, I have like notepads at this, but I still use like a hand, like, you know, I just take notes handwritten. So that also happens with people like us. So <laughs> that has really, really favored the growth as well. And then of course, you know, children going back to school, uh, seasonal holidays, again, for gifting purposes, uh, birthdays, holidays, return gifts, whatever. So it has been one of the, uh, you know, trends as well. So guys, uh, we also have like a full prime day, you know, of course, report and you get in you know, the full, you know, data is captured here in this insights. And you can obviously write to us at supportatsilera.com. We're happy to share that with you or you can sign up and, you know, you can uh, download this from Report Central. So moving on also, I would like to talk about top products that are exported from India. Um, and again, this is primarily just export data that I'm talking about. So I just want to make that clear that, but also at the same time, even though, you know, it is an export data information, it kind of resonates very well. And the products that are mentioned here are also the top selling, I mean, coincidentally or whatever it is, it's also the top selling products uh, for marketplaces and particularly Amazon is what I'm talking about. So that also kind of coincides together. So leather, of course, you know, um, the export value of leather, leather products from India, in May 2022 was about 402.6 million. And I think about the same time previous year, which is last year, was about 271 million. So almost a 50% increase, a 48.5% increase to be precise. So, I mean, I think it explains it. Uh, uh, you know, we really, really export leather in bulk. And we, of course, there's a lot of demand for it too. Electronic goods now, surprising, this was something which I was also quite surprised with when I was doing this research, but it's something that, you know, it also happens to be one of the most, uh, you know, exported items from India to the US. 
and uh, other places as well. You know, India exported about one three nine five point nine million worth of electronics by May twenty two, and that's an increase of again forty seven percent from last year. And again, I mean, there's a lot of things happening on the you know government side of things. Of course, we have cheap labor. You know, the low cost of labor. Combined with all of those tax benefits that we're getting from the government of India, they're coming out with newer initiatives now that offers for companies who really manufacturing in India, sourcing locally, really aided the boom. Also, India shipped about forty-four million made in India smartphones in Q two of twenty twenty two. I mean, how cool is that? <laughs> so everything from smartphones, you know, laptops, appliances, all those home appliances, even TV, for instance. You know, Apple is now also, of course, it had a base, a manufacturing plant in China, but now it's also looking uh, to set up bases in countries like India and Vietnam, again, for the similar reasons where we have, you know, cheap, uh, accessible labor. It's a labor-intensive industry. Uh, also, uh, I think, also because of low manufacturing, easy to produce uh, goods, electronic items, like I would say gadget cleaners, Um, cables, wireless charges, these kind of things that have really good demand in the US and can be created as a niche as well. So they, you know, pretty much contribute to this growth a lot. Okay, um, jewelry. I think again, I think our whether it's handicrafts or jewelry or carpets, this is a very well known fact. We've been doing this for years now. It's not something that we just started off right off the bat. Right, it's been happening for many years, and they have uh, India's exported gems and jewelry worth like. Three thousand two hundred twenty-two million. Uh, again, these stats are all from May twenty-two. So versus about two two thousand nine hundred sixty-eight in the previous year. So again, there has been a year of about eight point six percent year on year. We've been seeing that growth. So that's again one of those segments that we have seen a lot of these export items, which are also very prevalent on the marketplaces. And finally, again, um, you know. India's handicraft exports, carpets being one of them, we exported about 127.26 worth of carpets in May 2022. Now, again, um, I mean, like I said, these are just export numbers, but they also have quite a demand on the marketplaces. So, definitely something that you guys can look out for, uh, you know, if you're looking to expand or look into which category to sell. Okay. <clears throat> Again, um, some of the metrics that I've discussed this before, like demand, but these are some of the primary metrics that we look into when we are even deciding what is the right product and um, you know what really plays or rules the roost in the marketplaces. So, leather and leather products are one of the highest exported products from the country and a potential. Venka, uh, sorry, uh, the screen is completely white. Uh, I think. Yes, perfect, perfect. Please, please go ahead. Sorry. You can see, right? Yeah. Now, now it's fine. I think in in between it's happening. So yeah, it's it's fine. Okay. Cool. Shall I continue? Yep. Okay. So again, why leather? I would say leather is among the oldest trade in the industry in in the country. Rather, India has strong skilled manpower, and of course, you know a lot of innovative technologies. India exports leather to more than fifty countries. I mean, you name it, right? U.S., Germany, U.K., Italy, France, Spain, Netherlands. Uh, China, Belgium, UAE. Uh, surprisingly, UAE because even the whole uh, Middle Eastern region, they, they, Iran, and all carpets are very, very, you know, nice and beautiful. So is in the case with Spain, but they're, you know, importing all of these things from, of course, India uh, and uh, Australia, Poland, Hong Kong, um, and again, of course, US being the biggest or the largest importer, I would say, of leather and leather products from India, and account for about twenty three point seven seven percent of the country's total exports. Uh, during uh, April to March 2022, again during this export, uh, you know, we've also seen that it was valued at about I think 1.6 billion, uh, which is again an increase of um, 80 percent from last year. So again, uh, you know, it has a lot of demand. They have revenue potential of about 63.4 percent, uh, 49.5 percent demand. Competition is still comparatively very low. Uh, comparative to all the other top selling products in that category, fourteen point eight percent, and more importantly, it has about product like seventy two point three percent product innovation scope. Now, what that typically means is that there's a scope for creating a unique product by innovating the existing product. That's also a score that we kind of give out, you know, which is you know what you can do from an existing product, and there are different ways of innovation. For an example, I would say 
um, a smartphone um, smartphone holder which has a leather wallet can have like a RFID protection. So those are some of the unique things that you can uh, incorporate in a leather item as well, and that uh, that is what we kind of inculcate in a pro uh, innovation scope. <clears throat> Okay, so yeah, um, looking at these again, I'm going to just cover quickly what has been a particularly high profitable product in that particular segment. So for electronics, as you can see, the opportunity score was 78.7% based on the different metrics that I've discussed before. Airpods and gadget uh, cleaning kits has been uh, really like, you know, taking off in terms of customer interest in some of those most popular categories on Amazon. Um, you know, this product was always there, but again, the pandemic did, you know, there was constant need for cleaning and disinfecting and all of that. So this became one of the popular ones. Uh, you know, spa, uh, smartphones and laptops uh, regularly have increased this popularity of, you know, cleaning all of these things, plus especially being at home, dust and everything coming and sticking together. Um, I think there are also not, not many competitors in this product. It's a low competition product. It's in a particular niche and also the overhead costs are, you know, really low. So it makes it like a ideal product. Okay. Uh, Priyanka, what, uh, what exactly is PIS uh, index? So that is the score, the product innovation scope that I talked about. Oh, earlier. okay. That got is it, got index it. Index. So got, the got scope it. of your product to really innovate from an existing innovate. product. Yeah. Understood. Sure. Some score that we, this is something which is very internal that we do okay. uh, you know, for every product that we're kind of analyzing. And these are some of the metrics, core metrics that we look into. And uh, all these matrices that you're currently talking about, demand, revenue, potential, is something that you would be sort of taking the data from different sources and then analyzing yeah. them. And from Amazon pieces. itself as well. And of course, Great. sellers and seller data, all of those data. Yeah. Great. Okay. Please go ahead. So again, I've, I've like divided into different categories. So for electronics, this has been the top one. And I didn't want to take just like a, you know, I, I want to take a little different one, which is not just a very basic thing that we all know about. So that's this. Of course, home and kitchen. Again, vegetable chopper. Uh, <laughs> again, it's like, a you know, again, the I think the PIS index for this should be very high. And there's a lot of scope to innovate this product. So I think it comes in those top categories. Again, uh, there's... I don't know why, but there's no <laughs> very low competition here and low overhead <laughs> cost also. So you definitely have a good potential niche in your hands when it comes to, you know, chopper and you, you know, you can always innovate this product and create like a USP, which is very personal to just you and it's just competition is missing uh, so, and you're going to stand out from the rest of the crowd. So you definitely have a lot of scope for doing that. I think the third one, here, I mean, you can see the product's uh, score here, right? It's pretty good. Right, correct. So um, the profit product in the home and kitchen category has been this uh, multiple storage box. I think it's a fantastic product in this uh, category. Again, people in the US, especially living in the young population, uh, you know, love living in the urban areas, do kind of struggle with, you know, space and they, lot of, they have a lot of space constraints in their home apartments and, you know, they look for efficient ways to store items, which is why I think IKEA is really big also in the US and all these other countries because they come with these, you know, uh, cute, cute things to kind of uh, you know, storage boxes and those kind of things. So, again, that's where, you know, the uh, storage boxes kind of come into prominence where you there's definitely a need to utilize the little space that you have in countries like this. And it has a very, very high, as you can see, it has a very, very high revenue potential compared to the rest of the niches in the category. Also, there are not a lot of competitors in this particular niche. And again, the overhead costs are pretty low. So, you know, it makes it a good product. Okay, uh, I think this is the next one. Also, the category that I have is beauty. Beauty and this face massager. Uh, I have personally also researched on Amazon for myself and I have seen this kind of pop up <laughs> so many times. So this is also uh, such a, you know, it's one of the most easy to manufacture products that cost you less to really produce, but you can, uh, you know, you can reward and get with like good profit margins. And I see a lot of nowadays, even on Instagram or even on other social media channels, I'm seeing a lot of influencer marketing uh, when it comes to like massaging and even celebrities like kind of propagating. It doesn't have to be this one, but generally a face 
massage of the sort with the jade material and you know that stone which is prominent in china i think uh, green color stone and it's very like prominent these days so this is something that i've also personally seen uh, a lot of people kind of talk about it has an opportunity score of about 72.46 which is again making it venkata screen is again but i'm not sure i think there's some uh, it's it's yeah it's it's uh, it's fine now cool yeah i mean i've covered pretty much all the uh, profitable products here of uh, you know this is it has a good score it has good revenue potential again low overhead cost low competition so it makes it a good uh, you know product uh so pranka we have one question uh from the participant that is something that you know it's very relevant right now like sure. uh, you talked about a few products and this is just something uh on the you know sort of top of the surface that this is something that they can sell but how does one prioritize how does a seller prioritize which product to go into like again we, we can have 10 or 15 products do they have to go try one product and see the sales happening and then expand into new products or can they try multiple products at the same time what should be the strategy i mean it comes with a lot of things right of course it comes with capital it comes with your marketing strategy how much advertising are you going to do for that what budget you have for that what is your target optimization what's your audience it comes with all of those factors that you want to look into which market <laughs> you're getting into so a lot of research that happens behind the scenes as well but i think just to choose the right product uh, all these metrics that i talked about right you want to make sure you have a good pro- uh, profit margin you want to make sure that what costs are involved with sourcing the product what costs are involved and in even you know if there's a scope for innovating if there's a scope to expand to other market places let's say i'm selling a product let's say i'm selling a uh, leather for instance i'll take the example because i've just talked about it yeah. uh, i'm selling leather in india of course it, there is a great market here but uh, but there's also a good market in the rest of the world so you want to choose a product which there is a scope of expansion i mean you have to take all of these into consideration i can't pinpoint on just one metric uh, or two metrics that it, you need to look at it more holistically i would say okay got got oh uh, understood and one other question uh, which is again very relevant right now since you are talking about it is around the exports that we see for electronic products so uh, the the seller is asking that the export of electronic seems to be very high compared to the categories so is it uh, that 100% of this exports is happening on e-commerce or marketplaces or also it is b2b or enterprise company selling to other companies uh, everything so that's why i mentioned that's why i mentioned this is not specific to the e-commerce marketplace what okay. i've seen this is a total export that india has done uh to these different countries and that is the number that we are you know like i spoke about in the presentation but what i also mentioned is the products that i'm talking about in terms of the top exports from india cumulatively also happen to be top selling products on the e-commerce marketplace but the number okay. that I specifically shared or talked about in the presentation is only an export figure uh which is not just amazon or just the e-commerce marketplace figure honest Sure, sure. Got it. Oh, uh, yeah. Please, please go ahead. Okay. So a little bit about um, sir. I'm now we're towards the end of the uh, you know presentation. So I'll quickly run you through this and tell me if you can still see my screen or is it? It's <laughs> completely okay. Yeah. <laughs> great okay so celera is a leading data analytics platform which combines of course data technology and intelligence to empower all sorts of sellers whether you're a beginner level intermediate or of course a you know advanced level power seller uh, amazon seller or you know now we're also helping flipkart and uh, walmart now so in the us as well as in india so we use next gen al uh, ai and ml models to kind of help businesses drive profitability and really ace your amazon game now a couple of things that we do i'm going to make it really quick and short i don't want to dwell too much into it but some of those primary things that we do apart from of course data analysis business monitoring reporting of course we take pride in our market intelligence data and advertising uh, automation so we provide the best uh, infrastructure to understand your current rankings and positions of your squs inventories q and a negative reviews unanswered q and a's and of course enable um, brand monitoring that is what we cover in business monitoring market intelligence data again gives you smart actionable you know data related to your current squs listings um, sfr changes bsr movements best selling rank movements then also your customer feedback and streamlines your product related data 
needs and automation i think if you're selling on any e-commerce or even on social media you know how important it is to advertise and promote your product so you know our advertising feature and automation helps you in defining your campaigns your strategy your goals and really platform executing automatically everything so what it includes typically uh day parting custom rules is what we have also again very internal thing that we have created for our customers uh insights uh sales analytics profit and loss calculation customer reviews requests and all of those things so we pretty much do that and uh but i also want to say that you know we have it for all it's like a one it's like a fully inclusive you know once uh, one stop shop one size everything for all sorts of customers beginner level platform so whether you are at a platform level if you want to just do it yourself there's a premium model that we have but you can come to our platform and just figure out you know the the platform the dashboard and do your researches on your own we also have something for the intermediate level you know again um product intelligence is one feature where you know it really helps you to make smart decisions with data driven insights actionable insights uh you know for sales estimates make informed product decisions better that results and fit in your your own uh you know needs and business aspirations so again we have sales dashboard i'm not going to go into detail into all of this but just off the you know um a high level i'm going to tell you about it like sales dashboard the dashboard really helps you to grasp all of those sales data analyze and keep track of the numbers of how you're selling your amazon business is faring also employs immediate tasks to kind of keep your so uh, sales and orders intact so you know like you know if there's inventory where you need to stock up and so on and so forth of course advertising tool really equips you with private label sellers brands advanced ppc management tools to you know we have those optimization strategy um focused on building a really strong foundation that really ensures long term profitability and sales of your product again product research is what i also talked about where you get all these metrics and talk about and i really understand where we need to get into or even where you want to start selling which is the product that you really even want to begin with right if you are into that space uh, or looking to sell or start your amazon business for instance so really kick off your product research um, ideas and data from it you can find all those product niches demands best sales highly profitable products low competition products again with keyword research you'll understand what keywords to be included in the listings what are some of those competitors using in your listings which you can kind of which maybe you've not used but you want to you know take cues from them and kind of use them in your own thing so last but not the least i would talk about uh, managed services again if you want us to do the heavy lifting and the hand holding for you then we also have a team of experts which are working around the clock for you 24/7 available with customer support um you know where they would manage your accounts and do the advertising automation for you and you can strategize more on the expansion bit or even looking to just grow your brand or create that brand awareness so we really helps uh, you know of course increase their sales by like help clients increase their sales by over 20% while even bringing down their a cost by up to like 30% over time of course that happens and it's like different uh, clients will work differently their campaigns are going to be different but i'm just telling you like an average this is what we've done uh, some of our you know top notch amazon ppc marketing service also have enabled them to amplify their market share and really brand visibility leading to more customers more repeat orders and so on so of course product listing optimization is definitely a service you know where we talk about keyword analysis um integrating and including high converting keywords in your listings and so on we also work with larger agencies where you know um if you are looking to grow your agency business which are managing multiple brands then we also do the heavy lifting for that bit as well so we have i mean please do visit sellrad.com and you see different segments that we cater to and what all we do and we also have a premium model if you there's a no credit card connect you can sign up and check out the platform and dashboard for yourself so that is yes so priyanka on that we do have some questions around uh, since you have mentioned about that uh, advertisement support that you provide so one of the sellers is actually asking that what is the best way to manage a cost on amazon and also uh, the seller is interested in knowing what are the charges that you uh, have for providing advertisement services so i'm sure you would be uh, very interested in talking to this uh, seller maybe over email or something yes absolutely so like i said this is like some of the solutions i would also like to know 
what level of sellers are you so here as i said in terms of we have a freemium model where you know if you're a beginner seller you can do it yourself you do it your own uh but if you're looking for us to kind of manage the business we do have a customer customized pricing uh which we can cater to and you can definitely talk to our team our sales experts and of course our customer success experts and we can define like a price point for you but it's starting at i think 799 for the managed services bit but we also have plans which are as low as for 999 dollars and for 9 dollars as well got it and so you can uh, visit like sirdar.com and go to the pricing page you'll have for different segments what all you need also the uh, we have limits right so premium model obviously you'll have limitations on keyword researches you'll have limitations on how many you can do like let's say 10 researches per day so of course if you want to increase that limit you can uh, subscribe to the higher price plan of course got it understood uh, and whoso have uh, whoso have has any other question please feel free to put it in uh, Q and A, and we'll be taking that question. One other very specific uh, question, Priyanka, and this is again a uh, sort of a vague one, but the seller is saying that they did some research on a fitted sheet. Uh, that's one of the products in the uh, the bed sheet category, and they launched with their brand, and they have also mentioned the ASIN, but they they are telling that they have tried everything, but it's just not selling. So, uh, what what do you suggest here? Well, uh, I mean, I would like to know what. how many like products do they have within that category or so there a lot of other information that i would need so best way would be to either you know write to me or what we can do is get on a call because this can't be discussed like like this right Definitely. now need yeah. more information of course on what you have done what your marketing strategy has been how your product listing has been what have you done for the discoverability or desirability of the product how is it ranking on the serps things like that and also what goals you have in mind in terms of uh, uh, advertising marketing we have to discuss a lot of those things before we can come for a solution and give something out to you so i think best thing right. is either reach out to us i can definitely schedule a call and maybe we can talk in person or you can write to me at uh, support@celera.com or schedule a call and we can take it from there so great uh, and one other very interesting question that they are interested in knowing about a uh, affiliate program that might be there for celera so yeah uh, please reach out to uh, uh ms priyanka i have shared uh, her email yeah, and also the support yeah this is right is like you know you have all the information you can sign up you can schedule a call there are cds available there you can also email us at support@celera.com and have someone like call you and speak to you and we will probably give you some information and we can get on a call and discuss all of these uh, questions that you have there Uh, because great. this will not be i won't be able to do justice and answer this question for you in like a minute i would need exactly. a lot of things from you to before i even give out a solution so don't think i'm exactly. talking exactly. it i'm not answering it but it's just just by knowing this i can't answer your question to be honest completely completely makes sense uh, priyanka so uh, I, i suppose we have catered to almost all the questions so thanks a lot for your input priyanka i'm sure the sellers and all the attendees that we have had had uh, got a lot of information around uh, what exactly they have to sell or what is the innovation that they can bring or any specific products category or products that they have uh, they can target so thank you for your inputs uh, on that and thanks everyone for attending the session we hope uh, you learned something from the session and we'll definitely be uh, going ahead and having more such sessions for you so thank you everyone